What is up heroes, it's Midnight Zero, and welcome back to Let's Play Zero Escape, uh, <laughs> Virtue's Last Reward Blind. In the last episode, we did a lot of listening. We found out a bit more of the characters, and there was this masked man, and we were introduced to Clover, which is in and of itself quite exciting. And we were told a lot about how these nonary games are going to work, a lot about colors and color combinations, uh, allowing access to certain colored doors, etc. And... Hopefully in this episode we get to do a little bit more. I'm pretty eager to hop into the puzzles and think about the, the math behind maybe some of these doors. And I believe... What's the core? Or I think... Did we leave off just after this text? Or before this? I'm trying to remember exactly. Either way, we have questions. Of course we have questions. What's the point of this game? Why did you take us? Where are we? And, and who the heck is the real Zero? Yeah, we're just gonna hop right into Sigma interrogating Zero the Third. Oops, we only have like, what, five minutes or so? Chromatic doors have opened. Five minutes remain until chromatic doors close. Oh, so sorry guys, but it looks like your time is up. You'd better hop to it and get those secondary doors open. Screw that! We're gonna open crap! <laughs> you can take your lamery game and shove it! If you think we're just gonna swallow your psychotic crap and play along, you've got another thing coming, you baka! I'm a rabbit. Shut up! Well, shoot. I thought you might say that. Unfortunately, you have no choice but to follow the rules. Why is that? When the time comes, those three doors will automatically close. If anyone is left outside after they close, they'll... They'll what? They'll be penalized, and I have the, a sneaking suspicion that that penalty is death. You keep saying that, what the heck is this penalty anyway? Well... Death. <gasps> Gasp reacts only. Your bracelets contain two drugs. The first is an anesthetic called Soporil Beta. The other is a muscle relaxant called Tubopurine. I'm not familiar with either of those. Your bracelet also has a bunch of needles on the inside. If you break the rules, those needles hop out and inject you. Oh, now they're going to show us a nice little animation, too. First is the Soparil. Which puts you to sleep. Nine minutes later, of course nine minutes, the tubocurarine is injected, numbing your respiratory muscles. <laughs> I guess you could say it'll really take your breath away. That's too funny. <laughs> you should know that the Soporil is only there out of the kindness of Zero's heart. Oh, and I mean the real Zero, not me. <laughs> Zero just doesn't want to see anybody suffer. <laughs> <laughs> Isn't that just so compassionate? If I had a heart, it'd be melting right now. For what it's worth, the dialogue of this Zero the Third is actually hilarious. 
Anyway, all it means is that you'll die pretty painlessly. So hey, there's nothing to worry about, really. <laughs> nothing to worry about, you'll die, but don't worry, it's a painless death. <laughs> of course, none of that will happen if you just follow the rules. Wow, that was fast. Three minutes remain until chromatic doors close. Well then, looks like it's time for me to hop on out of here. Good luck, guys. See you all later. <laughs> Have a nice trap. That's pretty funny. All right, well, we've got three minutes to divvy up, right? Figure out how, how we're going to get through these doors. So there was poison in the bracelet. It seemed a little hard to believe, but it wasn't like I had anything other than a computer-generated rabbit say either way. Yeah, and it's one of those things where, are you really going to risk it, right? What were we going to do? There was a lot to think about, but we didn't have very much time. I feel like the easiest one is to just pair up... I feel like it's easiest to just pair up with the same color and then go to whatever complementary color. I, I feel like that's a very quick way of going about things. You could otherwise um, think through a couple other combinations, but what are we waiting for? We need to go. We need to get through those other doors. But how do we figure out which door to go through? You still don't get it? Fine, just pay attention. We don't have much time. Zero's explanation was pretty confusing, so let me put it in small words for you. Well, I guess maybe it'll be a nice refresher. There are only three possible options. Option A. This is where... The... Okay, yeah, so... This is where, um... Interesting. Okay, so then you could flip those, or then you can just do the complementaries. Sigma and I pair up with Luna. Our red and her blue can open the magenta door. I'm gonna kind of go through this pretty quickly. That would mean Clover and Kay would go with Alice. Third green goes with her red to make yellow. That just leaves Dio and Quark as the blue pair, and Tenmilji as the green solo. The only door they can open is the cyan one. Got it? Option B. Sigma and I go with Tenmilji, so we can use red and green to make yellow for that door. That means Clover and K pair up with Luna to open the Cyan door. This leaves Dio and Quark with Alice, and together they can open up the Magenta door. And this is what I'm saying. Look at this diagram. It's so much simpler than the other ones. I feel like this is the easiest one to jump to when you only have two and a half minutes left for the first time you're doing this. And finally, option C would be where we pair up with light colors to open complementary colored doors. That means Sigma, Alice, and I go through the Cyan door, Clover, K, and Tenmyoji go through the Magenta door, and Dio, Quark, and Luna go through the Yellow door. Oh, I just realized we're never going to be able to team up with Clover. I really wanted that. <laughs> Problem is... Which... Which do we choose? Please, Sigma, choose something. What? Well, wait, what? Why me? If you don't want to, then maybe Alice or Clover can choose. Yeah, but but Sigma, you don't realize you're the protagonist here. <laughs> or Tenmyoji, or Dio, or anyone. Once one person chooses, everyone else's decisions will be made for them. But please, you have to hurry. We're almost out of time. Do I actually get to choose here? One minute remains until chromatic doors close. <laughs> alright, alright. I'll pick. Nobody seemed upset, but they probably knew as well as I did that we don't we don't have time for bickering. I took a deep breath and spoke. Okay. Fi and I will Oh lovely! We're gonna go through the cyan door with Alice, because I am so intrigued by what is going on with Alice, and I'd like the opportunity to spend some time with her. I'm not too well, I mean you guys are probably like, wait, get to know the new characters, Tenmyoji and Luna, but I'm I'm too intrigued to figure out what's going on with Alice, so here we go. Not to mention, realistically, I think this is the most reasonable option, and that people can get organized and execute it within a minute, given how simple the 
the color associations are, but I'm thinking I'd like to go with Alice and take the cyan door. Is that okay with you guys? Yeah. Sure. That means Quark and I are getting paired with Luna. Oh, I can also... I remember with 999 there was that flowchart that gets really extensive. This is definitely a big branching point. I don't have a problem with that. Miss Luna's nice. That's fine with me too. Wow, Luna and Dio being paired together? That's pretty funny. We'll take the yellow door then, right? That means Clover and I will take the purple door with Temyoji. Oh, I wanted to go with Alice. <laughs> Her smile looks like such a smug smirk. Something wrong with me? Well, no, not wrong. What is it then? Well, you're really gonna make me say it? You're old. <laughs> What? Why you? <laughs> I'll have you know I'm as spry as when I was 20. 10 seconds. Remain until chromatic doors close. Yeah, what are you guys doing bicking it around? Just, I don't know, goofing off in this area where you're going to die if you don't get in these doors. 9, 8, 7. We don't have time for this. We need to go! If you're so spry, prove it by sprinting to your appropriate door. You're getting an earful later, young lady. Yeah, yeah, whatever. I love that pose for Clover with her hand behind her back or behind her head like that. Just so sassy. Three, two, one, zero. Chromatic door is closing. Naturally, we made it in time. Whoa, okay, so this is a pretty complex map. We are in the crew quarters. Is this just a hallway? The door said crew quarters. People probably stayed here. There are numbers on each of the doors. Probably not by chance. It looked like some of them were locked. So there are rooms 1, 2, 3, etc. Hmm. I guess we might as well start by opening one of them. Yeah, we only have a limited amount of time in these doors, don't we? Or maybe not. Okay, so there's a safe, a uh, phone, and I saw a book? Looks like we were right. This place really says someone lives here. Yeah, there's bed and everything. Yep. But who would be spending the night in a place like this? It looks too plain to be a guest room. This room probably belonged to a laborer or some kind of blue collar worker. Guess this is where the people who worked here stayed. But what were they working on? Beats me. Why would I know that anyway? I don't know what this place is any more than you do. I don't know about that. You seem to have these weird flashbacks or occasional drawing upon your memory, and I'm not 100% sure why. So, maybe you do have a connection we're just not aware of at the moment. <clears throat> your guess is as good as mine. Do you think it might be a coal mine? Hmm. Or maybe they're drilling for oil or something? I don't know about that. What do you think this hall leads to? You want to go have a look? Yeah. I do. No luck. Looks like it's locked. 
No getting out of the hallway until we can unlock it then, I guess. Looks that way. Alright. Let's split up and have a look at these cabins. Zero told us that there are key cards we can use to open the AB rooms. Maybe there's one hidden here somewhere. So, let's get started. <clears throat> With a nod, Phi and Alice both moved off to start looking. Phi headed to room 4 and Alice went to room 2. So naturally, we're left with room one. All right, seek a way out. Exciting. You get to put our thinking caps on. So can I use, oh, no, I'll just, interesting. So I can use Waz to move this around, but I can also just click on things, okay. So I, can we go in these rooms? I think Alice is investigating this room. Oh, well, I don't think she'll mind if I go in. Okay, we can, lovely. Hopefully we're not locked. Sigma? What are you doing here? Just thought I'd come check up on you. Oh. Well, I haven't found anything interesting. Don't worry. That's what we're here for. What's this over here? Okay. Also, I'm digging this music so far. What is this? You can't tell? It's a bed. An old cot. I know that. I'm talking about what's on it. You mean this silhouette? Yeah. Well, let's think about it. Isn't this just like tape they put down when someone gets murdered? Yeah. I'm also thinking that hole in the cot is is not accidental. Aw, oh, come on. Don't say that. You're gonna freak me out. It looks like it's on the left arm. I don't want to say it's, you know, far enough along the arm. Distal enough that it would look like the place where one of the bracelets would be. But we'll see. <laughs> Afraid of the dark too? Anyway, look at the area near the left arm. It looks like it was torn. Yeah, and it doesn't look like normal wear and tear either. I think someone did it on purpose. Do you think it means something then? I don't know. Probably. The shape of a person is drawn in the cut. It looks like the left arm has been torn. I wonder if that means anything. Is there anything else in here? It doesn't seem like it, so we'll back up and see maybe what's, what's over this way. Is that, are those scissors or a key or a pin of some sort? There's something on top of the desk. It's a little piece of metal. Small piece of metal. Yeah, it looks like something I would use to crank something, a stick with three rings on it. Am I supposed to insert it somewhere? I would bet on it. What about these slots here? What's the deal with these lines? Yes, I was curious about them too. Maybe they're a barcode? That's a bit much if you ask me. I don't think so. Then what are they? Who knows? Don't ask me. All right, well, I mean, there's, what, one, three, 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 or you could consider it three, four, three, moving vertically. I guess we'll we'll keep an eye out for anything that might be relevant in that regard. Probably in one of the other rooms. What do we have here? Hmm, I wonder what's in here. Well, keep wondering, it's locked. <laughs> See? I told you so. There's a panel over here where you can put in a passcode. If I can just get it to work, Enter a four-digit code, then press the Enter key on the right. Well, let's give it a try. I mean, we can give it a try, but... Interesting. So, was that a five that I just input? I think it was, because it's a three and a two, potentially, and this would be like an eight, and this would be a nine, and this would be like a one. And then I could hit Enter, and obviously it's gonna be wrong, but that's interesting, right? What types, what numbers can I make? I can still make pretty much every number, right? Yeah, because I have multiples of three, it's just zero, three, and six, and then I can add one, two, and three to each of those. So I can get all the digits, um, one through nine. It's just an interesting representation of it. <laughs> Do you have any ideas? Ideas for what? How to use this thing? Well, of course I do. Yeah, this is Sigma we're talking about. Of course he has an idea, Alice. How could you even suspect he doesn't know what he's doing? Hmm. You really think you're going to open it by just pressing random buttons? Well, I thought maybe I'd just get lucky. It doesn't work like that. There's no way you're going to get this thing open unless you know what to enter. Hmm. Yeah, it would take a long time. Or what, like, nine to the nine to the fourth? different uh, possibilities. That's pretty big. It's like over 6,000 and this looks 
somewhat related, but not quite the same, right? We still have a four-digit input, potentially, a phone. It looks rather old. Look at the top there. It's got a place for a small cassette tape. I think the tape is actually for the answering machine part of the phone. That would make this phone decades old. Yeah, no kidding. I'm not even old enough that I remember cassette tapes being used for these types of phones. An old-fashioned phone. It has a built-in answering machine that records messages onto a cassette tape. Okay. Well, I don't think... There's nothing immediately coming to mind for that. Can we look up? We can. Not that I really notice much. Alright, well, I guess... We'll head out into one of the other rooms and see what clues we can find there. So, let's see what Fi is up to. Fi should be checking this room out. I think I'll see how she's doing. Oh. Hello, Sigma. Find anything? Not really. Oh. Oh? Oh, indeed. <laughs> this, uh, whoever was living in this room must have gotten lonely and appreciated this, uh, imagery. By the gods, I never thought I'd see one. Uh, what? You scratch off the silver part with a coin so you can see the naughty stuff. What? <laughs> I never in a million years would have thought, but of course somebody thought of scratch card, mixing scratch card technology and erotic pictures. That's absolutely hilarious. That's it's so funny. It's so interestingly creative. Anyways, it's the ultimate in interactive poster technology. <laughs> what teenage boy doesn't dream of something like this? The excitement, the anticipation, and finally, the reveal. You look pretty excited. Well, naturally, we're gonna see if we can do this. Of course, this chunk of metal ought to do it. Darn it. It's too slippery. I think I'm gonna need a coin to deal with that silver menace. Silver menace. <laughs> it's so funny. I'm also looking, just saying, like, anything else on her body that might be relevant, right? Like the tattoos, the bandage... It seems not accidental, or like it's something I should pay attention to. We have another answering phone here. An old phone, pretty gnarly. If we're talking old, who the heck says gnarly anymore? Shut it! Fine. Have you tried calling anywhere? Of course. I tried every number I could think of as soon as I found it. Didn't work? Nope. Which makes sense, I suppose. Why would someone trap us in here and then let us make phone calls to the outside world? I don't think it's connected to the actual phone grid, so it can only make internal calls is what you're saying. Yeah, so I'd imagine we're gonna have to connect this to that other phone and then call, or have somebody call so we can hear one of the answering machines, and that recorded message is gonna be important. And we have another safe in here, okay. Darn it, they won't open. Yeah, it looks like it's locked. I think that thing on the door can unlock it. We just need to figure out how. Alright, let's give this a try. I mean, it's the same mechanic, but the order of the numbers is different, right? So I think in the top it was 036, moving from right to left, um, in the previous one, and on the left-hand side it was 231, moving from top to bottom. So... I don't think plugging in random numbers is going to be very helpful. You need to get a clue. A clue, huh? I wonder if it'll be the same clue for both vaults. Maybe, maybe not. What are we gonna find here? Look, there's something on top of the desk. Yeah, it's a piece of metal. Kind of cylindrical. Part of a key. Alright, appreciated. There's a bump on one side. This has to be part of a key. It's too slippery right now, though. I don't think we can use it. True. The inside's hollow, though. Maybe you can put something into it. Yeah, I was gonna say, we can probably combine this with that other portion. And we have ourselves a small key. Lovely. Something else worth noting is, huh, we have the slots here that are different. I'm trying to think, is this going to be helpful for our locks? Or That's interesting. What? Have you seen this before? Yeah, well, no, not this. But I've seen some similar patterns in the other rooms. They're all right next to a desk, too, just like this one. Have you figured it out yet? Nope, not yet. Oh. Yeah, and so part of what's interesting is I, I know that in the previous room I read it from left to right as 1333, three, three, but if this is related to the number pad, we wouldn't obviously be able to get anything more than the number 4, which wouldn't make a lot of sense to me. 
So the question is, what exactly does this relate to? Does it relate to the the phone pads or maybe maybe not? I don't know. We'll see what we can find. So this person has another dead body, but it's gonna be at the right like knee. Man, not again. Again, the silhouette. Oh, did you see one in another room? Yeah, I saw another one just like this. It had a hole torn around the ankle too. No, it had a hole, but it was somewhere else. Hmm. It's good to know that she said it was around the ankle. So maybe, well, that's probably gonna direct us when we look at probably this, right? Around that right ankle, it's that bracelet there. The left one is gonna be this bracelet here. Again, I still, I still haven't confirmed whether or not you guys can see my cursor. That would probably be helpful. But we have this key to use. I'm not entirely sure where we can use it yet though. So, well, there's this chain here. We can maybe do that, but let's investigate room number one, see all the information we have to work with first. Okay, similar setup. This one is a little bit different though. What's going on here? There's a set of three connected panels behind the phone. It looks sort of like a mirror. The surface is kind of matte, and it isn't very, or matte, I'm actually not sure how to pronounce that, and it isn't very reflective. The light is good, so it's easy to see what's on it, or it would be if there was anything on it. Interesting, several plates are attached to one another. They look kind of like a mirror. There's some red dashes displayed on it. How are they relevant though? Is the question. I'm trying to look at the reflection. And I feel like that's gotta be relevant. Hmm. Or is it really just a reflection of this? Maybe it is. A phone. Is it connected? Doesn't seem like it. Well, that's no good. I can't connect to anything. Interesting. Hmm, where should I call next? This appears to be the internal line button. Maybe three connects to room three. Might as well try pressing it. There is no phone associated, phone number associated with this button. What? That's weird. Why can't I call room three? Interesting. Okay, what if I try four though? The internal line button, I bet four means that one connects to room four. That's the room five's in, right? Might as well try pressing it. Who's this? <laughs> just me. Better than justice, I suppose. Really? You can do better than that. I'm hanging up. Come on, wait! What do you want? And where are you calling from? Room one. Ah. I guess they have some kind of internal line? Seems like it. So what is it you... Huh? What's this? Agricola Agricola 92? What? I didn't know you were into German style board game farming simulations. What? Am I gonna I'll I'll write that down, I guess? Agricola Agricola 92? Can I erase this? Yeah, lovely. Okay, so we'll we'll write Agricola. My uh mouse handwriting is not excellent, but it's gotten a little bit better. I've been doing some tutoring throughout the pandemic, well, and before then, but over Zoom with uh, with the pandemic, so I've got a little more comfortable with it, but I didn't know you were into German-style board game simulations. Whoops, I meant asterisk, asterisk 9-2. How on earth could you get those two mixed up? That's what it says on the phone's display. Oh, so when we called room four, asterisk, asterisk 9-2 showed up. Interesting. Hmm. Asterisk, asterisk 9-2. Maybe it's a clue. A clue? Anyway, I'm going to get back to searching this room. Call me if you find anything else. Alright, so let's try calling that number then. Asterisk, asterisk 9-2. Okay, so I'd imagine now I probably just need to call room number 2, and that'll give me the first two digits of whatever four digit code I'm putting together. The internal line button 2 must be room 2. Maybe this will connect to Alice. Let's give it a shot. Alice. Hello, hello. Who is this? Oh, hey, Alice. So you are there. Sigma, is that you? Yeah. So where are you calling from? Room one? 
That's right next door. Why'd you call me? You could just walk. Wait a minute. What's wrong? There's something on the display. It says 25 asterisk asterisk. Yep, there we go. 25 asterisk asterisk. Do you think it's a clue? Hmm. Well, I'm gonna look around this room a little more. I'll see you later. Okay, so it looks like 2592 is gonna be the way to go. This is room three. No tape has been inserted. The answering machine will not function. What does that mean? Hmm. Where should I call next? Okay, so 2592. I'll, I'll write that down in the memo. <laughs> Um, just because that's what we're going to need to call at some point to potentially hear a voice machine. What's this box underneath here? A safe. Oh, it looks just like the one in the ambidex room. I wonder if I can open it the same way. Let's try entering the passcode. Okay, so it's the same type of passcode. Obviously, we're going to need one for that gold file in addition to one for escaping. Darn, what should I do? Well, we don't have a passcode yet, so let's look for a passcode. And then this one has a different ordering of the numbers as well, but it's the same type of lock. Darn, it's locked. I think this panel here is what unlocks it, but nothing happens when I push the buttons. Is that a keyhole on the top there? Hmm, I probably need a key or something. Can we use this key there? Shoot, I guess that wasn't it. Alright, I guess. We still haven't found where to use that key. Which is a little bit concerning, but... this uh, when, I, when I saw these, like, arrows... The first thing that came to mind is playing the Ocarina from the old Legend of Zelda games. That's hilarious. There's a book on top of the desk. Let me see here. It's called... How the heck do I pronounce that? Schrodinger's Cat? <laughs> Lovely. There's a kitty on the cover. Isn't that just precious? Whoops, there it goes. Still can't help talking like a cat when I talk about a cat. What? Is that like is that Sigma's little quirk? Cat talk? Let's see what's in here. Looks like all sorts of sciencey stuff. I have no idea what any of this means. I don't think this is part of any kind of puzzle, so I'm just gonna leave it here. Except, except you didn't leave it there, did you? Is it in our inventory? No? Okay, I guess. They're in this room too? More shapes on the wall in front of the desk. So up, down, up, down. But they're not the same shape, it's like, Hmm. I wonder how they're related, right? So on the far left we have what looks like an equilateral triangle, and then we have a kite, and then an isosceles triangle, and then a sort of shield-looking, arrow-looking shape. Hmm. A desk comp looks like the top's made of glass. What's the deal with this drawer, though? Oh! There are drawers! There's a drawer sticking out from the desk, but there's nothing in it. Since the top of the desk is made of glass, I should be able to see anything I put in the drawer. Okay. Interesting. So, hmm. I'm curious to see if that's relevant in the other rooms that we have already visited. So this person has it in their left knee. Hmm, there's another silhouette here, and this one's ripped too, but they ripped a different place this time. This one is messed up around the left knee. Okay. Well, we still haven't found where to... Oh, they set the book over there. Ooh, someone left a book about cats sitting meow. <laughs> Alright, let's try in rooms two and four real quick. And just see what we can find there. Can we go in three? Can I at least try clicking on this? Is this what the key is for? Darn. There are handcuffs on the door. I can't open it. Huh? Wait a minute. This key. Can I use it? That's what they're for. Lovely. Yes, goodbye handcuffs. Shouldn't have any more door problems now. All right, so we're the first one in here. Let's see what we find. Over here, we have yet another phone. I'll, you know, click on it for the sake of getting the text, but a phone, there's a spot in it that would fit a small cassette tape. The tape is probably for the answering machine, but the lid's open. Hmm. The cassette bay is open. So it seems like this is the one, especially given that we can call this line, this is the one where we need to place whatever cassette we do eventually find. We're gonna have a little area over here again that we can open up and look, this one is gonna be in the right shoulder, right upper arm. This is just like the other ones. It's ripped too, but in a different place this time. Yep, I I agree with that sentiment. And then over here, of course, what is that symbol? 
How are these relevant? These dashes are very different from the ones we've previously seen. There's something on here. A box cutter? A box cutter. What can we use that for? A large box cutter. It's pretty heavy, actually. And then what about these shapes? Whoa, they've got those patterns here too, huh? Can I pull out the drawer? I can. Hmm, there's a drawer sticking out from the desk, but there's nothing in it. Since the top of the desk is made of glass, I should be able to see anything I put in the drawer. Is there something I need to put in the drawer and then have it, you know, reflect it or something in a particular way? I don't know. And then this has a different arrangement. All four on top are green, though, which makes me think it's already open, and it is already open. Whoa! That opened really easily. I guess it wasn't locked. I'm glad we still tried. I think there's something in the locker. What is this? Large roll of aluminum foil. What are we gonna use aluminum foil for? What's this? It's all shiny. Is this aluminum foil? There's so much of it though. Must be some kind of industrial size roll. This is way more than you'd use in any normal kitchen. I wonder how much there is. Maybe if I roll it out. Here goes. Huh? Whoa, there's something printed on it. There we go. Looks like shapes and lines. Is this some kind of clue? I can't carry this around with me though. Maybe I can cut out the important part somehow. Interesting. I would not have thought to, uh, to do that, but that's okay. Aluminum foil, and here are the shapes. <clears throat> okay. Um, <clears throat> so, I mean, I, I recognize the isosceles triangle. On the far left, that's kind of like the inverse, right? Or the complement of that equilateral triangle. On the far right, I can see sort of like an upside down complement or, or inverse of that of that shape, um, that shield looking shape. Hmm. There are four strange shapes on the aluminum. Yeah, they really are strange shapes. The question is, what do we do with those shapes, right? Do I place them on the drawer? That's all I can think of. I don't think it'll be relevant here. I think it'll obviously be most pertinent in that other room. Yeah. All right, the aluminum foil is in place. Just gotta shut this. And, um, not really seeing how that's particularly useful. But the aluminum acts like a mirror and reflects the images drawn on the wall. The image and the pattern on the wall aluminum are overlaid, but this doesn't make any sense. Let's give this another shot. Yeah, so I think the idea is, um, <clears throat> in each of these, well, basically, we'll probably get a clue for opening one of the particular safes in a room by using an aluminum foil sheet to reflect a particular pattern. I'm trying to remember, where were the shapes? I think they were in room number one. And then we'll be able to open up a safe, we'll get a new aluminum roll, and then we'll use that in a different room and rinse and repeat for now. So yeah, let's do this. Oops, there we go. All right, the aluminum foil is in place, just gotta shut this, and there we go. So, Circle, star, diamond, triangle. Circle, star, diamond, triangle. Huh. Um. Circle, star, diamond, triangle. I guess I'll write that down in the memo as well. Circle, star, diamond, that's a bad diamond, <laughs> triangle. The question is, Can we use that? Right? Like, I don't see that being very useful for this. It's maybe useful for this? But, no, it's not. <laughs> it's not. Schrodinger's cat. Hmm. So, I mean, I guess we can take a look at it. The images on the wall are reflected on the aluminum, which is acting as a mirror. Both images are overlaid. It looks like a circle, a star, a diamond, and a triangle. Huh. What does that mean? Yeah, that's, that's what I'm wondering, too. I'm trying to think, maybe it has to do with the number of sides? Maybe? No. 
because then this the star would have 10 sides technically and we can't input that maybe it's the number of triangles shown in the particular image as some sort of a passcode so it'd be like one mm, four two one not really sold on that though I can see four shapes through the glass it looks like a circle star diamond and a triangle Maybe it's the number of like points each of them has. <laughs> so it'd be like zero, five, four, and three. Hmm. I'm not sure. Let's try a few of these ones. Oh well it can't be zero, can it? Lock lock, I need to find a key that will fit the hole. What about the Huh. So if I need to find a key that'll fit the hole. It's interesting that then, well, let's see if I can take this back. I can see four shapes through the glass. Oh, I can't. That is in and of itself pretty interesting. So this was clearly meant specifically for this room. Do I get a key from there? No. And I don't think I see anything that can be interpreted pretty easily as circle star diamond triangle on this number pad. I mean, I guess we could take a look at what some of the other rooms have to say again to see if anything is more pertinent now. It is interesting that in room one we weren't able to actually fidget with the lock there, right? And I wonder if it'll... Okay, so we can here. Hmm. Is it maybe how many triangles there are in each of them? I don't know. I could try the same, you know, phone number from before, right? So it would be two, five, nine. What was the last one? Two, right? Yeah. Okay, not relevant. All right, um, just pressing button randomly. Yeah, I know, I'm not pressing them randomly, I promise. But I also don't remember a particular area that had those shapes. Maybe there's one other room that I'm missing. No, I don't think so. Obviously can't get through here yet. <laughs> um, okay. What else? I was just in room three, right? We can see what's going on with Alice. Maybe it has something to do with that poster? No, I mean, there are shapes there, but not ones I think I really care about right now. Oh, and so interesting. This one doesn't even have a, a keyhole. That's why, and this is probably why the other one as well um, doesn't have a, uh, it allows me to actually do the, the keypad. All right, so 2592 didn't work here as well. Hmm. Where is that gonna be relevant? Where are those shapes gonna be relevant? I'm not sure, but I actually um, need to take a phone call right now. So I will, I'm going to pause and be back in just a moment. Okay, sorry about that. Um, let's see here. So we were, we were thinking circle, star, diamond, triangle, right? And trying to figure out where that was relevant at all <laughs> in any of these rooms. And at the moment, I'm not really seeing it. There's a star here. Is there a circle? You know what? Given that there's a star, there's one of these moons, there's probably... There's an awesome pinup poster on the wall. Maybe if I had a coin or something, I could scrape the silver part off. Yeah, that's going to be really relevant to um, probably revealing the code. 
Also, a reminder to myself, uh, when I inevitably edit this later, please turn on V-Sync and see if it records well still. Sometimes it gives uh, recording difficulties, but I think it would be pretty helpful in this game, given how things have looked thus far. Okay, is there anything else in the hallway? I wouldn't expect there to be much in the hallway, but I'd rather check than, you know, be caught off guard. Three is the room that had everything shown. Come on, move over to one. Yeah, I want to go in room number one. But yeah, I think three is where we... That's where we found everything, and then we started to use it in here. Circle, star, diamond, triangle. So this one requires a key, notably. Right? They're not even going to let me try the number pad. So it can't be relevant to that. Hmm. We might already be at one of those points where I sit here and I think about it for a bit and edit out the sort of boring in between. <laughs> and let you guys know when I actually think of something pertinent. Wait, what? What? I was like, on a whim, I was like, do I have any items I haven't used? And I saw it, I had an aluminum foil roll. Oh my goodness. I bet what the game's logic was here was, you roll out some of the aluminum foil, you see something of interest, you cut it off, and then you have to continue doing that for each of the four drawers. That... That was not clear at all. And so I've been sitting here for maybe like a good five minutes just kind of wandering around the rooms like, what, what am I supposed to do with this whole circle, star, diamond, triangle? Which, for all it's worth, I, I could still be completely missing something and I actually can do something more with that at the moment, but I would have, I only on a whim checked my items because I didn't think I'd gotten anything new since that last aluminum royal or foil or roll. And so, regardless. We have a new sheet that we can work with. Let's see what happens. All right, the aluminum foil is in place. Just got to shut this. Four, nine, eight, five. All right. Gotcha. Gotcha. Okay, so it's starting to, to come together, I guess. <laughs> but that was a little bit frustrating, but it's not the end of the world. Four, nine, eight, five, right? Lovely. So what are we gonna find in here is the question. A coin? Ha! Piece of cake. Wow, good job. That was pretty impressive. There's something in there. A cassette tape. Okay. Yeah, and you can see, so we still have the large roll of aluminum foil. What happens if we do this? Yep, we get another one. That's interesting, because again, that would not have been apparent. Had I not just by chance done that. Anyways, a small cassette tape. Alright, lovely. So we'll put that in room three. But I'd actually like to go to the other room and um, open up that safe first. So we'll go into room four with Phi. Oh wait, no, I think this is the one that doesn't require the, the number. No, it, does, it looks like it might actually. So, we'll go on over here, choose the appropriate item, and give it a go. Alright, the aluminum foil is in place, just gotta shut this, and... Well, that doesn't look exceptionally helpful. <laughs> hmm. I could try to make sense of it, but I don't, I don't think... That's very useful. Aluminum foil is reflecting the pattern on the wall, just like a makeshift mirror, huh? They're overlaid on top of one another, but yeah, it just seems like nonsense. Let's try this again. Can I... Let me see if I can cut another piece off. Pattern 2. Okay. I guess we'll give that a go. 
All right, the aluminum foil is in place. Just gotta shut this. Three, four, seven, two. That's much more helpful. All right, so we've got three, four, and then seven and two. What are we gonna find in here? Whoa, good job, you opened it. <laughs> yeah, I'm pretty great. <laughs> Looks like there's something in here. <laughs> no, Sigma just patted himself on the back. Yes, check it out, a wallet. You probably shouldn't get your hopes up. Why not? Just a feeling. Yeah, fine, whatever. Not gonna let you bring me down. Let's see what's in here. It's gonna be a coin. What the heck? What is it? There's only one coin in here. And it's not even real money. Just a toy coin. See, didn't I tell you? Darn. All right, so we've got a coin. And it's just a toy one, unfortunately. Not gonna be making bank while we're trapped in here. Okay, so now that we have the coin, let's turn our attention to this poster. Time to reveal all. This is, I don't know, is this game rated T? No, it's probably rated M. All right, well, you guys, you guys have already been warned. No, <laughs> all right, you silvery buck, it's time to meet your doom. Let's do this. Yeah! Darn, you're excited. Hey, don't misunderstand me. I'm just really anxious to find a glue in there, aren't you? So you want to let me do it then? Sigma's like, heck no. Uh, I'm sorry. Please, just let me have this. <laughs> then get on with it. Search for hints on the poster. Click and drag across areas of interest to scratch them. Click the green triangle on the left to move your view up and down. Let's get started. Interesting. Okay. So we can do this. And we'll get rid of all of this. You see a butterfly. Okay, admittedly, doesn't seem like there's really much going on up here. Right? So we'll move down here. See if there's anything. Oh, a shark! It's pretty neat. Something back here? No? Okay. How about up here? I doubt they're going to make me be, like, really particular about making sure I get every last bit of it. The real question is, aha! I knew there was going to be something I could scratch off that wasn't just, uh, you know, the silvery part. So there's an H in a diamond. This is going to be where it's relevant. So let's uncover the other things. There's the bracelet. Lovely. So there's a circle. That's going to be our number one. What do we have here? Triangle, which is going to be nine. What about this? This band-aid? No. How about up here? The flower? Star? No. This? This? There we go. Okay. So the numbers in order are going to be one, six, and then... One, six, nine, eight? No. One, six, eight, nine. Whew. Pant, pant, pant. <laughs> Darn. I look away for a second and you've scratched it all off. Yeah, I noticed some things that might be clues, so I kept going. You mean these marks on her arms and legs? Yeah, they're, they're not just awkward tan lines, you don't think? There are four of them, a star, a circle, a diamond, and a triangle. Hey, what are you doing? You've already scratched it all off. No, I'm not done yet. This blue part still needs to go. <laughs> oh, Sigma, I don't think that blue part's going. Sigma, I don't think that part's going to come off, no matter how hard you scrape. That's, that's actually pretty funny. So, alright, anyways, one, six, eight, nine is gonna be our, our clue. Oops, I accidentally clicked on that as opposed to the blue triangle at the bottom. Alright, so we've already done that, correct? So, the question was which room did we still need to go back to? I think it was room number one where we needed to unlock the safe. Well, the safe, but I meant this actual, like, locker. Oh, wait. <laughs> Where am I gonna use the 1689, then? If this one is locked with a key, the one in room 3 was open, we've already opened the ones in rooms 2 and 4. The 1689 must be a number we call. I'm curious. Hmm. 
Huh. Okay. Well, I'm not exactly sure where that 1689 is going to be relevant, but I guess that's okay for now. Probably should have written that in the memo. This was already open, correct. Did we ever find this one? I don't remember. Either way, I wanted to put the cassette tape in here. Putting the cassette in now. All I have to do is close the lid. And now when we call this number, we'll be good to go. But yeah, I don't think we ever did the, the one for here. So let's take a look. All right, the aluminum foil's in place. Just gotta shut this. Locker. Okay. The pattern on the wall is reflecting off of the aluminum. The two patterns are overlaid on one another. Looks like it says locker. Huh. Alright, well I'm not really sure why that's pertinent at the moment. However, we've used up all of our items, so we don't need to worry about that part of the puzzle anymore. I guess let's call the voicemail and see what it has to say. Right? I think at the moment that's the only remaining clue that I have a lead on, right? There's the 1689 clue, but we haven't quite figured out what that's for yet. There's no phone number associated with this button. Oh, that's right. It was what? 2592 or 952? No! It didn't keep up with my clicking speed. Alright. We'll just check them out anyways. 2592. Lovely. 2592. Alright, now let's let's pay attention. But <laughs> uh bye. Congratulations! With that voice. Looks like you found the answer. The number you just entered is the number for the room for the phone in the third room. The button's hair on the top of the phone are just shortcuts. That means all the other phones have actual numbers, too. Though I guess that's not really important. Anyway, you're calling room 3 right now. Room 3? Then that means, since you're so clever, I'm sure you figured it out by now. But yes, you're right. I'm speaking to you from a pre-recorded tape. So you can grasp me all the questions you like, but I won't be able to answer them. I'm afraid this little talk is going to be a bit one-sided. Ugh. Then again, it's going to be a very little talk, because I only have one thing to tell you. Have a look at the left screen above the phone. The answer you're looking for is hidden there. What answer, you ask? Well, I can't help you with that one. Bye, have a nice trace. Left? Wait, what? How did that happen? Anyways, I mean, 2652, we'll write that down. I don't know. Oh, because that's the, <laughs> those are the digits we called, or we input in order to find, um, to get this voicemail in the first place, but now they're reflected in a particular way. Oh, here, there we are. All right, there's another four-digit number. What am I supposed to do with this? I guess I need to enter it somewhere, so... Yeah, I think uh, we're about to enter it right here. It was what, 2652? Yeah. 2652? Let's see if these do anything. Hey, it opened! There's some kind of pin in there. Let's see. Okay, so we'll take out this small metal pin, which we can probably use to open up that other locker. I already got that pin thing, so I can close the lid, right? Okay, so I think that exhausts that clue for the time being. We can now go over here and open up this door. There's a keyhole on top of the panel. I think a pin or something might fit in here. And there we have it. Huh? What was that noise? Maybe I can type stuff in now. Oh! So now I can do the four-digit code, and this is where the 1689 is going to come into play. Lovely, lovely, lovely. Okay. What? Let me check. Circle, star, diamond, triangle. I thought that was 1689. One. And then this should be six. This should be eight. And this should be nine. All right, darn it, I don't know. <laughs> I feel like 
That should be it. So circle, star, diamond, triangle. Yeah, all right. Well, let's check the poster again because maybe I'm just misremembering the numbers. The poster was in room number four. Yes, because Phi gave us a little bit of a hard time about it. <laughs> we still haven't brought those cots into play, but yeah, so it looks like circle is one, star is six, diamond is eight, triangle is nine. Oh, you know what though? <laughs> the, the orientation of the six and the nine probably matter, right? And I think that triangle is actually upside down compared to what we saw when we did uh, the reflection. So, so we've tried 1689, let's try 1986. I think that might be a good way to go. Okay, and we were in room three? Yeah, I think so. Oh, nope, we were not in room three. Thank you for your patience. Overall, I enjoy doing these puzzles. It definitely requires a viewer who can be patient and enjoys watching me solve them, enjoys hearing my thought process too, um, and is able to tolerate when I overlook simple things. Anyways, let's try 1986. There we go. Okay, and we're in. Yes, it opened. Okay. Oh, this is just like the code we saw in the ambidex room. I mean, it's a different code, of course, but it looks really similar. I think this probably opens a safe. You found a safe password. To view it, navigate to the Pass tab in the archive. The question is, I thought it would tell me if it was an escape password or not. Small screen inside the locker. Anything else of interest? What about this line here? The screen is flashing white. There's a small device with a screen on it. Oh, okay. So we're only going to get that one passcode here. I guess, um, will they tell us here? If it's the escape pass or is it the hidden file password? I mean, interesting. Oh, wait a minute. So I think we actually did use these clues because all of these spots on these bodies were the parts that we were able to scratch away for numbers. Yeah, okay, so there isn't actually anything, at least that comes to mind, that we haven't really done. So there was one where it was just, you know, a star, etc. Let's try inputting this. Yes! It opened! Man, what good is a victory dance when there's no one here to see it? I'm lonely. <laughs> Poor Sigma. Oh well. I'll just have a look inside. What do we find? Wait a minute. If I look through the stuff in here without telling Fi and Alice, they might be suspicious later. You took something when we weren't looking. Yeah, those two are... Those are two bad sides I really don't want to be on. I think I'll just go get them before I go through it. Well, that was easy enough. Hey, what's this? Did you open this, Sigma? Yeah, who else could have? Why didn't you tell us sooner? What? Forget about it, Alice. Let's just see what's in there. What's this thing? A map. Okay, well that's pretty helpful. It says floor A. Hmm. We can look at it more later. There's more stuff in the safe. Why don't we get all of it before we start going through it? Good idea. Looks like we've got a card. We'll make that two cards. This is one of those cards for the AB rooms. See, it says Ambidex room right there. So it does. Then we can use these to open the AB rooms, yes. But how are we supposed to get back there? The door to the warehouse is still locked. I think the answer to that question is in the safe. Check out this note. Here are a few more rules for you. Once you've opened a door, you can hop through it as much as you like. The chromatic doors are like that too. Once you open them, even I carrot keep you from going in and out of them. Wait, really? Any color of bracelet can go through them, and as many people as you like. But, 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 you have to escape before you can take advantage of this free reign rule. Once you've activated a chromatic door and gone through it to the puzzle beyond, it won't let you back 
until you've solved the puzzle. I see. So once we can get out of the crew quarters, we can head back to the warehouse, right? Yeah, seems like it. Okay, and this key is how we're going to get out of here, right? So this key will open the door at the end of the hallway. Key found in the safe, okay. Let's go. Wait, what about this book on the top of the safe? Hmm? Oh, it's a book about cats, but do we have time for that right meow? <laughs> meow? Sorry, it's this sort of, I guess you could call it a tick. I've had it since I was young. And I wish I was just kitten, but I can't control it. <laughs> it's pretty funny. It's not dangerous, though. You're perfectly fine. Not dangerous? Um... <laughs> awkward. Anyway, the book's called Schrodinger's Cat. Don't you mean Schrodinger's Cat? Oh, you've heard of it? I think it'd be harder to find someone who hasn't heard of it. For real? <laughs> do you know what it is too, Alice? Of course I do. I was just wondering why this book was here. So what is Schrodinger's Cat? It's a quantum physics thought experiment. The book probably discusses the principles of this experiment, talks about it in more depth. See, Erwin Rudolf Joseph Alexander Schrodinger was a scholar of theoretical physics in Austria. He was born in 1887 and... Wait, is this going to be a long story? Yes, thought so. How about we talk about it later then? I mean, we just found the key that'll get us out of here. You do have a point there. Yes, he does. We should leave, now. All right, let's go. Wait, they're forcibly leaving for me? For me, what? Can I not go back in there? Sigma, what are you doing? Let's get out of here. Wait, but I... I wanted to find a golden file. Is that not something I can do? I have the key. We should get going. All right, well... <laughs> okay, I mean, I can't even think of any other clues or stuff we could have used, but... If there is a golden file I'm missing, please let me know, because I generally like to complete games, so long as they are fun challenges. And... I would, it might be really bummed if I missed a golden file so early, or if I just, you know, committed to a point of no return that is now, you know, going to prevent me from getting the golden file in the future. So, I guess let me know if that's relevant, and I can always go back and redo the puzzle and, and try to get it, because, you know, save files and all that, but... Anyways, we'll use the key. The lock for the door. Right now it says lock. You guys ready? I'm going to open the door. Okay. I'm ready. Go for it. All right then. Three, two, one. You found it. All right. I mean, we successfully escaped. I can't get rid of this nagging feeling that we missed a golden file, though. Oh, and we just we just walked a really long way. Like a really long way through plenty of corridors. What? Why? Excuse me. Is this an elevator now? Okay, um, we made our way down the hallway, and at the end, waiting for us is something we're going to find out about in the next episode. I hope you guys enjoyed this one. We went through um, another escape room. I think the only thing that really stumped me was that we could use the aluminum and the box cutter more than once, and that wasn't immediately apparent. But after that, it was, it was pretty fine. It was a cool puzzle, and I, th I think it was really creative, the different types of clues they used and different items they integrated into those clues. I really want to know if I missed a golden file, though, and if in the future there are going to be those points of no return, where if I input a password that's not the golden file password or the hidden file password, it'll just take me to the end of the puzzle regardless. If that's something that's going to be happening regularly, please let me know. Or if all of the puzzles are going to have hidden files, please let me know, and because um, that's something I'm going to be really almost, almost paranoid about, if you can't already tell. But... Anyways, until the next episode, this has been Night Zero, and this mission is complete.